Hey everybody, this is Nerdy30. I just wanted to say thank you for joining me for the first video of 2024. I can't think of a better way to start a new year than starting with a new series. I'm super, super thankful for the support that I've received with the last eight to nine months that I've been uploading content and growing the channel. I truly want to say thank you in making this journey memorable. Now, sometimes as computer builders, we tend to wind up with an excess amount of parts. In my case, I usually have a drawer full of random graphics cards since I buy bulk auction computers from the government. This sparked the idea of can these cards be used for gaming? So starting this new year with a new series, I hope you enjoy episode one of the Graphics Guild. Sit back and enjoy the show. For today's test system, we're going to be using this HP Pavilion that I got on eBay for about $45 shipped. The system has a Ryzen 3 2200G and originally came with 8 gigabytes of RAM and built-in Wi-Fi. My original plan with this system was to flip it as a budget gaming system because this particular model was selling for about $180. I decided that it would make a really good addition to the graphics guild for testing low powered cards like the 2100 that don't require external power. For today's system, the specs are as follows. Ryzen 3 2200G, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and a one terabyte SSD hold all of the benchmarked games. I utilized the Steam sale over Christmas to add a variety of games to the test bench suite for the channel. I added some low end games to some current AAA titles. As usual, I start my process with the Unigen Heaven benchmark. So you can see the system really didn't do so well at 1080p low settings. Keep in mind this was a workstation graphics card and the purpose of this card was never intended for gaming. All games were tested at 1080p resolution and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the results as I was. Up first is Red Dead Redemption 2, one of the new games I picked up on the Steam sale. As you can see, due to a driver issue, the game wouldn't even launch. I uninstalled and reinstalled the drivers and still could not get this card to launch this game. First up was one of my favorite games from back in the day, Left 4 Dead 2. I thought that this might be a good entry to see how this card handled older games from cross-platforming. Left 4 Dead 2 and Left 4 Dead are some of my favorite games because back in 2009, when Mrs. Nerdy 30 and I got married, we were real broke and I was able to get a Xbox 360. I cannot tell you how much time the two of us spent playing these games because we had nothing else to do. As you can see, I was quite surprised with how well the game ran. With an average FPS of about 45, the game was more than playable. Originally, the game launched on the Xbox 360, and if I remember correctly, most if not all 360 games were limited to 30 FPS. So this climbing well past that was a very, very smooth experience.
Next up we had Minecraft Java Edition. At first the game was really slow and stuttery as it rendered in the world. Initially I did not mess with the settings of the game and the default settings that the system configured is what caused the stutterness. So you can see I changed the, I believe the uh, render distance from 12 chunk to 6 chunk and it, that made the world a difference. Now I have the game marked as making 65 to 85 as the average FPS, but if you check the counter on the bottom left corner, it was really closer to 95 to 110, but when I would get to the edge of the rendered, the system would spike just a little bit to bring that FPS down, so I felt more comfortable with 65 to 85 being a more accurate representation of this game. Next up is Fortnite. Originally the system defaulted to DirectX 11 as shown, but I wanted to try the game in performance mode, considering that is how most people are playing the game on lower end systems. These are the settings that were used for this first round of recording. So I felt a little conflicted with performance mode in this video because the way performance mode works is it shifts the workload from the graphics card to the processor while the Ryzen 2200G is a very capable processor that kind of took away from the point of the series. So in the next segment I did replay a match in the Direct X11 mode that I felt would be more in line with the true spirit of the series that I'm trying to capture. One thing I wanted to point out is if you've paid attention to any of the stats counters from the other games is that this graphics card is really, really the bottleneck for the system. As most cases, when this graphics card is running at 100%, the CPU is running anywhere from 35 to maybe 50, maybe 60%. So that is why I feel like this HP is going to be a good addition to testing lower end cards for the Graphics Guild series. I actually was excited in this game because I actually got some kills and I believe may have been my first recorded kills of my YouTube Fortnite career. This game was right up at the limit of the 60 FPS cap that I had and was actually fairly enjoyable. As I've said before, I'm not a huge Fortnite guy, but I feel like maybe I need to put some more time into the game because that stupid build function gets me every time. Full disclosure, I totally missed that rifle uh, during my first kill until I saw it in the final editing of the video. Anyhow, these settings are where we try DirectX 11 as the system uh, originally populated the settings with low everything in view distance is epic. This is what I felt was a more accurate representation of what I'm trying to capture with the series. With the load of the game shifted back onto the GPU and not the CPU, I feel like this was a much better measurement of the graphics card and its capability and this is what the graphic guild series is about i want to discover new cards new to me cards maybe unknown cards cards that weren't intended for gaming and i would just want to see how they work as i've stated in previous videos one of my passions is electronic recycling and I believe every piece of electronics via a graphics card, computer, VCR, whatever, has a purpose. Sometimes that purpose is to be reused. Sometimes it's for parts. Sometimes it's to be responsibly recycled. Anything that prevents it from just sitting in a landfill. 
this being at 35 to 40 FPS was okay, and I did play quite a bit past the recording footage, and I did manage to get four kills total before I was killed. This was a little bit more stuttery than the performance mode, but once again, we're measuring the capabilities of the graphics card and not the processor. Just keep in mind as well that this footage was all recorded in 1080p. So if this card on DirectX 11 was pulling 35 to 40 FPS in 1080p, a drop in resolution to maybe 900p or maybe even 720p would probably really increase the performance of this card. Now, the video is getting a little long and my goal with my content is to never get too long in the tooth. So I'm not going to be testing every resolution, every setting. This is just me talking to you as an interested viewer. Overall, as you can see, uh, during this little terrible, terrible gunfight I was in, uh, the build mode gets me. I never build. It 9 out of 10 times defeats me because I don't like building. And frankly, I usually test in no build mode. Next up is Valorant. As you can see, the game ran great. Valorant does not take a lot of system resources to run, and frankly could run on maybe one step above a literal baked potato. I didn't configure any settings, and the match is running just on whatever settings the system populated when I first launched the game. Valorant is, to me, a little bit better than Fortnite. I think it's just because when you're done, when you're dead, you just got to wait for the next round to go. We pulled, you know, 110 to 120 FPS, and I think that I could probably do a little better if I did adjust the settings, but this was perfectly playable. And once again, you'll see why I'm terrible at first person shooters here. Next up is where we really crank up the stress and we run the built-in benchmark feature of Cyberpunk. These were the settings that I ran the benchmark on and you'll see where this card's limitations really are. If you've made it this far into the video, I want to say thank you once again. And this video's password is potatoes. So comment the password and what is your favorite type of potatoes. For me, I like to make homemade garlic mashed potatoes from actual potatoes. The system really, really did start to show the limitations of the graphics card here, but I never had expectations that this card would run this game. Here are the results. As you can see, we averaged four FPS, and this is a good example of how the graphics card is really, really bottlenecking the Ryzen. 3 2200G. I wanted to say thank you once again. If you've made it this far into the video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more PC related content. So I decided instead of just deleting some extra footage, I wanted to show you what I went back and did after. This was performance mode with a 120 FPS cap, and this is really where the game shined. I was able to play and this was definitely the best way to play this game, which I hope goes to show that budget and old tech can still be used today, even going into 2024. You just have to manage your expectations. This whole idea started because I got these cards for free from a recycle center near where I work. Every once in a while, we take some stuff over to the recycle center and they know me as the computer guy. And sometimes they set things aside for me and that is where these cards came from. I have five of these cards in total, and the good news is they all work. And based on the performance of this video, they're going to go into some budget systems that I hope will make people happy. So once again, thank you for joining me for episode one of the Graphics Guild. This card has the honor of being the first member of the guild. Please like, share, and subscribe for more PC-related content. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nerdy30, and I'm signing out.